Have you ever turned your head a certain way and then got dizzy? The medical term for that is positional vertigo. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 59-year-old man who came to my office with those complaints. Anytime he turned his neck to the left, he began to get dizzy, lightheaded, and he even experienced blurred vision. The most common cause of positional vertigo is something called BPPV or benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. That's a lot of words, but that is not what this patient had. BPPV is a common cause of positional vertigo. That's when the little crystals in your inner ear can become dislodged and make you become dizzy anytime you move your head from side to side. Semicircular canals in your inner ear have a fluid within them and if these crystals become dislodged, it can make you become dizzy. It's usually diagnosed by something called the Dix Hall Pike Maneuver where a healthcare professional will take the patient and do this type of head turn while rolling the patient backwards to see if they get any spontaneous eye movement, also called nystagmus. The good news about BPPV is it's usually self-limiting and it can also be fixed by a series of maneuvers that can be done by a physician, physical therapist, or an audiologist. But that is not what our patient had. He has something called bow hunter syndrome. What is that? It's a very uncommon cause of vertebral basilar insufficiency. Doctor, you're gonna have to talk in English here. Let me explain this rare but potential cause of positional vertigo. If you guys have followed me on this platform, you likely know what the vertebral artery is because I've talked about it in many videos. There are four arteries that supply blood to our brain, two vertebral arteries and two carotid arteries. The largest vessel is the carotid artery, which lies in the front part of our neck, and the other vessel is our vertebral artery, which runs through the bones in our spine. Here is a good illustration showing how the vertebral artery actually runs through an area in our spine called the transverse foramen. It runs on either side, the left and the right. Now, why does this left one seem so much larger than the right one? That's because a lot of people have a dominant vertebral artery and it's usually the left side. Why is that? It's proposed that the left side of our brain in most people is the dominant hemisphere and requires more blood and nutrients to get to that side. The cervical spine is not a fixed structure, so anytime we turn our head side to side or up and down, the vertebral arteries will also move within the spine. So when we turn our head, we could potentially narrow the lumen of the vertebral artery and that could potentially compromise the blood flow to the brain. The vertebral arteries supply the posterior circulation of the brain, which supplies our cerebellum, and that is our balance center. A compromise of blood flow to the cerebellum could potentially cause lightheadedness, balance troubles, dizziness, and nausea and vomiting. It could even cause blurry vision, ringing in the ears, and trouble walking. This can happen anywhere from a few minutes to even a few hours, and it could potentially cause a stroke. Bowhunter syndrome may also be referred to as cervicogenic vertigo or cervical dizziness. It's called Bowhunters because it was originally described in this patient population where these people will turn their head to the side to focus on an object for a prolonged period of time, which can elicit the symptoms. And interestingly enough, most people are right-handed and turn their head to the left side when using a bow. Remember I said that the left vertebral artery was dominant? So the most common cause of Bowhunter syndrome is on the left side and it's usually a bone spur in the neck most commonly diagnosed in men ages 50 to 70, and it's extremely rare in women and children. I showed his MRI of a cervical spine, which shows C4-5 degenerative disc disease and spondylolisthesis, as well as C5-6 and C6-7 degenerative disc disease. This circle right here is at C4-5 on the left that shows compromise of the vertebral artery from a bone spur. Diagnosis can be tricky, but can usually be confirmed with dynamic cerebral angiography. That's exactly how this patient was diagnosed. Here's the vertebral artery on the patient's left side, and you can see right at C4-5 that the vessel is slightly narrowed, but when he turns his head to the left, it is almost completely occluded. Anytime he turns to the left, that bone spur compresses the vertebral artery and makes blood flow decrease to his brain, which causes dizziness and all the symptoms that he's having. That's kind of crazy. Now there are other causes of this problem, but that is the most common reason. In his case, to treat this condition, we did what's called an anterior cervical discectomy infusion. The problem was at his C4 and C5, but he also suffered from chronic neck pain and degenerative disc disease of the other two levels, so we elected to treat all the levels to help all of his symptoms. By removing that bone spur and then fusing that segment, we decompress the vertebral artery so flow would be maintained at all times 
regardless of his head position. Needless to say, as soon as he woke up from surgery, he no longer had these symptoms. After he recovered from the surgery, all of his neck pain went away as well. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Hope you guys learned something on this one, and I'll come back next week with another case.